1863 Ventures, you support more than 3,000 black and brown entrepreneurs across the country through your accelerated programs. How confident are these entrepreneurs about their businesses going into 2023, even with inflation? And are they concerned about possible recession? Well, thank you for having me. And I think that there's two responses to that. I think the first thing is they are concerned. They're concerned because of the impact that it's going to have on their customers. But the reality is when you talk about black and brown businesses, they're used to being locked out of access to capital. They're used to having to spend more for things. And so they plan. And so I think we have seen a very high success rate amongst our entrepreneurs. In fact, 98% survived post-COVID. So I think for black and brown entrepreneurs, they're consistently planning and always <laughs> expecting the worst because nothing is guaranteed. The difference now is they've got to be mindful of their customers and what they can afford moving forward. And in terms of preparing for possible recession, just preparing for 2023, many entrepreneurs, even those who've been in business for years, don't even really know how much it costs to run their business. Yes. How can they get a better picture of the numbers? Where should they start to get an accurate handle on cash flow? So I think the first thing is plan. You know, your financial statements tell you a lot. And while I love technology, I think we've over-relied and assumed that everything can be solved by some app and pushing a button. But I think really sitting down and understanding what are the drivers of growth, talking to your customers, what do they like, what don't they like, and really planning. I think there's three things that, that all small businesses should be doing. First is just take a moment, get grounded, get in the right mindset, and know that this too shall pass. The second thing is, is to be open. Be open to do things differently. Be open to know that something that worked six months ago may not work for the next six months and not be afraid of change. And the third thing is be laser focused on watching your financials. Whether they're red or green, it doesn't matter. It's the holiday season. But understand what are they telling you about where your customers are buying? How often are they coming back? Where else are they searching and looking for information? What sites are they getting to you? What is the feedback that you've gotten and how do you begin to implement that? Because keeping your customers engaged and happy is going to be the greatest gift you can give to yourself this holiday season to make sure the revenue keeps coming in. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that Neela was talking about in terms of our economy is where household debt is right now and how consumer debt is yes. relatively low. But for small business owners, many of whom have started their business on credit, what is the outlook there for them? Because a lot of the credit they, they were looking to get and the lending that they were had access to in 2020 and 2021 due to the pandemic has gone away. So now, yeah. what actions are, should they be taking to make sure they get the financing for their businesses that they need? We, are, we say cash is queen or king, depending on who the <laughs> entrepreneur is. And so I think the first thing is really getting a handle on your prices. Uh, you know, we work with entrepreneurs all across the, the globe and certainly all throughout various sectors. And in the spirits business, we found that the, the cost of glass has gone up. And so they've had to really rethink that. So I think the first is really get a handle on your cost and assess if your prices are right. Because if you're able to at least cover your cost, then you're not dipping into your pocket to pay more. The second thing is, if you do have a lot of debt, think about consolidation. Think about negotiating negotiating a repayment plan, making sure that you're staying on top of that. The one thing I would say don't do is don't go dip into your personal savings and borrow against your house. Speaking really my language, Melissa. Sure, please, Speaking really my make sure that your business can stand on its own. One of the challenges in this whole bootstrap mentality that we have is that you're going to make it as long as you can. You're going to fake it till you make it, as they say. The reality is make sure that you don't bring your personal life down as your business goes on that roller coaster and just really stay focused on the numbers and know that some months are going to be high, some months are going to be low. And when you do have any extra cash, think about where can you invest it? Where can you put in the business? Where can you begin to make changes? You know, we live in a world of contractors in 1099, which are absolutely wonderful, except in times of uncertainty, what you don't want to do at the end of the month is say, oh my God, Gosh, look at all this money. So where can you move some of those variable costs that are hard to predict to become fixed costs that you are laser focused on making sure you're generating enough money so you don't have a deficit at the end? That's really key advice. And I and I, I, I agree with it wholeheartedly in terms of keeping your personal finances and your business finances separate. But the reality is it's hard for some people yes. to do that. Yes. That's how they started their business. And to move away from that is, is difficult. Are there some real steps that they can take, that people should take, to separate the two, to try to really keep um, a line between what is your personal and what is your business finance? Yeah, I, th I think there's three things that we recommend. I think one is that if you are going to invest personally, set a cap. Just like I, as an investor, would set a cap, I can't fund your business forever. What is the amount and what is the duration of time? And be really clear and, and, and disciplined in that process. 
Two is making sure you've got separate accounts. You've got your personal account, you've got your business account, so that you actually have a true picture of what are you making and what are you spending. And the third thing I would say is to be mindful that at some point in time, you're going to need more money and really stay on top of being able to pay yourself a little bit and pay off those expenses. One of the greatest challenges we have in being able to take down that personal debt is that oftentimes small businesses wait forever to pay themselves. Mm -hmm. And we talk about even if you only have $100, pay yourself $50. This is all about building the muscles to sustain and grow your business over time. And then take $50 and then $25 toward a bill and $25 to yourself. It is not about waiting till you have that big rainbow jackpot at the end of the rainbow. It's about making steady progress and paying down any personal debt and continuing to invest in your business. Yeah, a lot of small business owners that I've spoken with say, you know, we can't pay ourselves first because we have a team. We're developing our team. I have a consultant for this. I have an accountant for that. I have someone doing this. And that can really eat away at your business overall cash flow and right. the, the, the 1099 costs, the consulting fees that you're paying. You have a strategy to kind of get away from that. How should small business owners be looking at, yes, it's important to have a team, but paying many people for all of these different costs? Yeah, you know, I think it's important when we start, we just kind of grab consultants because you're starting a business. You're not even sure what you're supposed to do. But every quarter, think about what are the key operations and processes that, ne that are needed to keep your business going. And think about how many people are touching those processes. If it's too many people, that's a risk in and of itself because if they leave, the whole thing could fall apart and you probably are not being as efficient. So we say every quarter, think about all the tasks that are being done and are they being centralized and aggregated in the right way and are the right people handling them. So if you have a whole marketing campaign and one person is doing social media and one person is writing script and somebody else is taking pictures, is there a way to consolidate that and be willing to invest in a full-time person instead of the variability of cost over time with a bunch of consultants who may not be in sync because you're too busy running a company? And so I think it's really important that you reflect on how is my money being invested? I think it's important that you know small businesses, they want to survive. They are the backbone of this country. They get really excited and they sometimes over-index on, I'm going to make it. But you can't make it if you're not paying attention to your steps along the way. So you've got to be really smart and disciplined around how are you spending money so that it has a positive ROI over the future. Yeah, we're talking about the future, but a lot of people are watching saying, I'm in the thick of it right now. What That's does right. Melissa have to say to me right now? So they may have holiday promotions going on. You That's say right. it may be helpful to extend those offers. Why is that? Absolutely. You know, the holiday season is a long time. And depending on what your beliefs are, it starts at Hanukkah and it goes all the way through Kwanzaa. And so think about it. If you have already spent money building up your inventory or getting your hours ready to do consulting for the holidays, don't think that everything ends on December 25th, right? We know a lot of people that go shopping thereafter. Think about how do I extend it through the end of January? That that way you are allowed to amortize your costs, you can amortize your expenses, and you're extending beyond when people might have gotten money for Christmas, they're taking things back, they're not happy with their got, and they're still looking for opportunities to invest. So I think one is really getting your promotions and think about the holiday as a season and not just a day. The second thing is really understand where your customers are shopping and go there. Don't spend a lot of money on campaigns and ads on sites and, and places they're not looking, which means you have to talk to them. And the third thing is really be creative in your messaging and tell a story. Don't just talk about a sale that you're having, but talk about why is this important? Because as inflation rises, customers are only going to be focused on things that are necessary and things that are important to them. How do you connect with the customer and send the message, this product or service is going to be extremely valuable to you? One more question about pain points, and one of the biggest ones for entrepreneurs and many businesses in 2022 was supply chain disruption. Yes. What is the answer to that? How can small businesses ensure that in the new year they have a better handle on when they're going to have the inventory that they need and making sure they have what they need available for their customers and the services available as well. It's a great question. I think one is you've really got to be able to look at those numbers. We, we run into entrepreneurs all the time that say, well, I don't look at my books because I'm afraid what they're going to tell me. There is so much story in those financials beyond what the numbers say. So I think one, really track and look at where have been the ebbs and flows in your business. When are your customers coming in? What is the, the, the time that you want to be able to get in touch with them and make sure communication is key? The second thing is go back and talk to your suppliers and really understand what are their challenges and how do you begin to compensate? As a finance major, we say diversity 
diversification is the key to any successful portfolio. Diversify some of those sources. Never count on just one person to be able to meet the demand that you're going to have from your customers. And where possible, have a couple of people supplying all over the globe so that when something goes down in one part of the country or transportation costs go up because you're shipping from another country, you have some options. And really think about what are the levers that you can pull to drive a profitable and sustainable business. Got it. A lot of people are watching. They have their vision for 2023, Melissa Bradley. But you say smart goals. That's what you really need That's to have. It. Vision is fine. But what are the goals that they need to have as we close? Yes. You know, I think the goals are to stay confident and stay grounded. Do not get caught up in the in the, in the in the craziness of what we're going to hear on the news and the ebb and flow of people's emotions. I think the second thing is pay attention to your numbers and really let them tell you what's working, what's not working. Three, be willing to make change. We know that some of the most successful businesses started during times of recession and crisis. Think about what are the minor tweaks you need to make in your business. And the final thing, you just said it, is have goals. Don't panic. Don't think about what do I keep needing to change all the time, but what are the goals? What are the lessons that you're learning? How do you want to make those changes. Think in small increments. Think by month, think by three months or by quarter, think by six months, and think by a year. Don't plan for next year, December. You can't. What do you want to accomplish between now and the end of the year? What do you want to accomplish in January? And be willing to say what worked and what didn't work and make those adjustments. Being able to make change is not a sign of failure. It means you're keeping pace with what you're learning from the market and from your customers.